Hello everyone, Andrew Morgan here in transit between our, my old home and my new home. This is the Total Takeover Hangout this uh, this Wednesday. This is Hump Day. Hello Mike. And we're going to talk today about free information, how valuable it is to you. I have something interesting to say about that myself, but I will withhold that for a while. And I'll, I'll turn it over to Carl. Today there's no call in, so don't worry about trying to call in. If you'd like to text your questions, you can text uh, someone that's here on the panel. But, uh, yeah, we're going to have an awesome hangout today. Over to you, Carl. Great. Thanks, Andrew. You know, um, this came to light with just over the last 24 hours of some of the conversations I've had with people about um, what, you know, what information is, is valuable to them and what isn't valued to them. You know, we have a lot of people, especially like in, in Total Takeover, because we provide um, information, we provide training, you know, like, like a university type of atmosphere. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people and they go, you know, education just doesn't seem like something you would actually sell. It seems like something that should be free along with maybe a primary product. And, you know, here's where, you know, this kind of gets into um, kind of a deep discussion that will happen today because, you know, I, I view education as a valuable commodity out there, um, as a valuable product, and, and I'm sure a lot of the, the panelists do here. But, you know, we always get this, well, you know, I can get all kinds of information for free online. And, you know, there is a lot of information uh, that's, that's free that's online. And, you know, the first line that comes to my head is you get what you pay for, okay? Um, because usually the information you find online is usually more, rather than a, a training or an education, it's more of a advice, okay? That's, I guess, how I'm going to put it. There will be other people here that will, um, you know, probably have different uh, views on that. Um, but I'm going to bring it over to the panel because we have a lot of panelists today. I want to get everybody's input. Uh, Tracy will be back in a few minutes. She just had to go away. So you know what, Rob, we'll start off with you again today. And Rob, if anybody had read what he did, he was going to give away, what is it, a thousand credits, I think, or something, advertising credits. If you could figure out what is different about Rob today. So over to you, Rob. Okay. What is different about me? I'll let everybody just kind of continue to continue to ponder that. But uh... Uh, just having a little bit of fun over at the uh, at the Skype group today, so let me kick off this topic um, about f f uh, the value of free information. I believe I have that. Uh, do I have that right, Carl? The value of free information. Yep, correct. Okay, very good. Okay, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of information out there. Let's just start with that. Um, when it comes to anything, one of the revelations that I first came across online <clears throat> way long time ago before I was even a marketer was the uh, oh my god the uh, you know the what was it the Yahoo search engine and uh, Netscape the World Wide Web the internet back in 96 97 I couldn't believe it I uh, I think Netscape was the first search engine engine that I ever used and probably the second one was Yahoo and I'm like home oh, oh my goodness I can't believe you know whatever you know I was into at the time you could find a mega amount of information that was back in the late 90s. Uh, then I became a marketer and I continued to, uh, you know, obviously utilize that. Any Anytime I really need anything uh, about anything, I go and Google it, right? That's a, that's a terminology. A lot of marketers, believe it or not, they'll ask me questions. I just go and Google it. Uh, so there's a ton of free information uh, that's out there. there. There's no doubt about that. But um, from a standpoint of um, the way I look at information is I may be able to use it and do something with it. Somebody else may not. Um, information, when given, uh, when, when put forth, or I guess I should say when utilized by a, a teacher, a trainer, an instructor, uh, somebody who knows what they're doing, uh, becomes something totally different. And that's what we are as marketers here, and that's what we are here in Total Takeover. We have, uh, we have information that's even more than just... Uh, regular free information. It's uh, uh, pretty powerful when you look at the interviews that Val Smith has loaded up back there for you. So make sure everybody who's here who has come in as a paid, I think the test drivers can look at a couple interviews. The um, uh, regular life changers maybe have a little bit more access on that. But uh, there's an example of 
uh, information is taken to a to a whole different level. So, and what you what you have also is a uh, if you are indeed a life changer, and if you're not, you know, please come forward. I'd like to give a shout out to Don McEachern. He's my newest, latest, and greatest life changer, and that's exciting, isn't that? Isn't that fun to say, hey, I've got a new life changer. I'm a life changer. Don's a life changer, and Don, I, I hope you're listening in today, and I, I hope you embrace that role. That's not that's not a term that we use lightly here. Um, so the information that we have, um, you know, acquired and accumulated with our own experience, what we have with Total Takeover, uh, with everything that we possess, coupled with the business opportunity and the comp plan, we can change people's lives. So, um, you know, the fact that we we run a business, and you know, the business is to help. Uh, and support and change people's lives, you know, aka the name Life Changer. Um, that's a pretty powerful thing. So free information is all well and good, but teaching and training and coaching and inspiring people, um, having a, a great product like we have, and having ourselves, as we talked about, I don't know, the days are starting to run together uh, for me now. I'm not sure if that was yesterday or the day before. We talked about ourselves um, as life changers being part of the product. Um, you know that takes that information to another level, and what we have to offer people is the opportunity to learn and to earn, and it doesn't get any better than that. So I value information, um, but what I really value is taking information and sharing it with others. Over to you, Carl. You know that's exactly it. You know there's a lot of information, like you said, you can find free all over the internet, but it's when it's taken and put into like a format. You know, like a like a, a teacher or a professor or something like that will take information and then they'll put it into a format and deliver it in that format, and that's when it becomes a a taught type of pattern, right? I mean, it's one thing to go and say, you know, look at this video, look at that video, and all that other kind of stuff, but when it's put into a format, into a do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, that's when it becomes into a taught format or it becomes a, a, a teachable format, right? So people will tend to look at things a little bit differently when they're, when they're taught. Like when you go to university, a lot, of, a lot of stuff, even in university, can be found all over the web, all over the place, because it's leaked out through documents and stuff like that all over the web. But it's, it's out there in pieces, okay? So it's harder to absorb things, I think, it done in that thing, trying to grab pieces and pieces and pieces and put them together, when it's already got a format, like what we have, we've got the format in place, so it's either easier to deliver it that way, and that's when it becomes a product. So, Dr. Michael, let's uh, let's get your thoughts on, um, you know, how valuable is free information to you? Well, I think it's a key for everything, isn't it? Uh, without uh, valuable information that you can source for free, most people wouldn't even make a decision uh, to join anything. I mean, the Internet has given us the ability, especially Google, uh, to Google up things uh, before we join. And uh, uh, most people actually that are into the market, uh, business people, that uh, Google everybody. I mean, uh, you want to join a business, and before you say, see what's, seen, what's coming up there, what's showing, what are the people behind it, you look for the names, and you do this for free. And that for free seems to be a true value because um, 25 years ago, that wasn't even existing for us. You had to pay... Uh, uh, an, an, uh, an office or some some businesses that actually did uh, specialized in getting information about people, and now you can actually have uh, yeah you can make your own pick if it's always accurate. That's another story. I mean, you can find so much things uh, for free, and I think this is the handicap. Free information is great, but the right free information is the key. And I think that's uh, where we really have to all wonder sometimes if the Internet uh, doesn't make it too easy to say, oh, that's a scam or that's crap or that's not good and stuff like this. Because uh, we live in a universe, uh, universal world and it's like uh, everywhere there are so many people with different ideas, with different beliefs and different meanings and you will always find somebody that doesn't, that thinks exactly the opposite of what you think are the best things in the world, you know. And uh, taking it from that consideration, yes, Free things uh, to me have a great value, and I think people believe and truly are believers that free value should be something that's like open source in the programming world. You know, 
uh, where you have open source where people contribute rather to protect the information and getting charged for it. So I, yes, I'm a true believer in uh, free information. I use it uh, to advantages uh, on the business, on the private things. I mean, well, how great can it be to freely communicate uh, with your friends and uh, relations that you had years ago, which you didn't take in contact for years, you know? The internet has made those things happen and that many of the services are for free. And I don't want to go into more detail and say, well, really nothing is free when you look at what comes behind it. But in principle, for the average job block, yeah, information for free does make sense. And it makes sense to every business person, every business member, and everybody that wants to learn about TTO. What we are doing here is free for them as well. So yeah, I think it's a value. If not, I wouldn't be here. There you go. You know, so here's another aspect of the the value of free information. And we're not saying that um, you know if you if you have a program that charges for information that that has no value. That that is not what we're talking about. We're talking about what kind of value do you put on information? Okay. Uh, again, there's the free information that's available that you can find anywhere on the internet. How many people actually use it? I come across people every day asking me the questions of that stuff that's all available on the internet. Obviously, no one is actually using any of that education. Okay, so um, we provide it in a format that makes it easy for you to go across. We have this panel here that um, gives um, information that's just uh, unbelievable out there. I mean, some of the stuff that we share is just. Um, I believe should be uh, valued rather than um, free and uh, that may may end up happening in the future so let's go over to Joanne Joanne let's give uh, your thoughts on uh, you know how you're valuing free information okay thanks Carl um, so with free information it I believe it's you know it's very important and because of the internet it has been so much easier you know you can just type in some keywords into Google and you have blog posts and videos pop up and you can read about anything almost about any subject that you want and uh, I agree with uh, what Rob and Dr. Michael said um, is that you know the information is great but you need like a type of structure especially if you're trying to learn about a subject I believe that you can read all the videos like bits and pieces like you have videos on SEO and blogging and how to like relationship marketing but really the thing that would help like has helped me and would help other people is to put it in some form of structure like you start out with this you read about this and you learn about this and you have like steps like you go to school um, you learn you learn your alphabet and you learn your numbers and then you you put it in, you learn vowel sounds, and you put it all together, and then you learn how to read a book. Well, the same thing with marketing and building a business. It's kind of the same part. You have all these different components together, but and you can find those different components all over the internet, you know, blog posts and YouTube, but really, unless you have a structure and a step-by-step, it's you know it's quite hard I believe not not impossible it can be difficult and challenging to you know to synthesize it and put it all together and those are my thoughts back to you Carl uh, you know and that's exactly it because I mean how many people have you come across that have said to you I'm overwhelmed I'm overwhelmed I'm overwhelmed it's because you know we we put out a a format and I like I I even put a you know say th this is what you need to do you need to go to all these social medias and you need to market there and then people get overwhelmed with that um, you can go out and you can find all kinds of stuff on the internet about about doing social media doing solo ads doing traffic doing all kinds of stuff but if you don't have a formatted way of doing things um, you know it's almost like you said you got to go to school you got to learn the basics. And then you go to an intermediate level, and then you go to an advanced level, and then you go to an experience level, and then you go to an entrepreneurial level. You know, everybody wants to go from, you know, the start of school to graduation day, right? And miss everything in between. That that's that that's the problem that we see online. And this is where we get people. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. I can't do this. It's just too much. It's too. When when in actual fact that um, network marketing, um, in in a single day. Anybody can can build traffic, 
make sales, and um, and actually do that all in about a two-hour period in a single day. I know I've done it, and I know many of the panel members on here have done it. Okay, it's when you learn the skills of these levels as you go. Okay, you have to learn the skills, you know, before you get to the big payoff. You know, this is why we have so many people, they come to the internet and they, they're making a thousand dollars a month and they want to come to the internet and, the, and then the first month they want to make ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars a month. You know, you, sometimes you have to sit back and look at the logic of everything. You know, you can have all the free information you have in the world and then you've got the paid information you have. And the paid information will far supersedes anything that you see for free. Because the free stuff is in pieces. It's shattered, right? So unless you have the time, and you're going to take the time to piece it all together, which pretty much nobody will do, okay? It's, it's, it's too time-consuming to do that. That's why we have formatted paid systems such as Total Takeover. You know, there's lots of them that are out there. I'm not saying we're the best. It's just that... You have to figure out what's best for you. I mean, there's price points and everything as well. You know, I know there's there's programs out there that teach education, but you know, the alt to get to the ultimate level of education, you're paying five to twenty thousand dollars for it. Is that worth it to you? Do you think that you can gain a full time five thousand plus a month income for free? I don't know. Maybe. But it's going to take a lot of your time to put all that piece together. Let's go over to Joan. Okay. Nothing in this life is free. Nothing. Why do I say that? If you value your time and time is important to you, then that's a waste of money if you're just on the internet and spending hours and hours looking up information and not really applying it but just for the sake of looking up information that is a valuable waste of time and money so what you need to do is you need to decide if you want to work on the internet and you want to be in network marketing you have to make a decision based on your information that you have accumulated what is the best road for me to travel on what is the road that's going to add value to my internet life if you're on a road that's not at adding any value then really you're wasting your time and you're throwing money down the drain and I think that's basically what a lot of network marketers are doing. Why do I say that? Because I was in that position. You know, when you take on the responsibility of growing a network marketing business and you, you're green, you don't know anything about what you need to do, really, it's like swimming in a lake and you're, you're continually swimming and you're getting nowhere. Believe me, that is the most frustrating place that you can be. So like Carl and like Rob and everyone on this panel has pointed out, the fragmentation within network marketing is unbelievable. And that is why network marketing has received a very bad name in many instances because people are go on they join an organization and then they go on to the internet to look for information as to how to build a business and they're never able to put things in focus because they're looking every which way for tidbits of information it's true that when you join a network marketing company, especially one that has a um, uh, product that you can purchase and have delivered to your home, many of these companies want you to be out there selling their product 
to people, but they're not really teaching you the right way to do it, especially if you want to do it online. So that's why so many people will head to the internet looking for ways to market online. And unless everything is put into a structured way, it becomes an absolute state of chaos for many, many people. So yes, free is good. But like in Total Takeover, the information you're getting is not free. You're paying $89.95 a month to be in the inner part of Total Takeover to take advantage of all of the information that's put there for you. So anything of value really isn't free. You're either going to pay out of pocket for the information and when you pay out of pocket, you're going to take advantage of the information because you basically have paid for that information. When you go on the internet and you look up information that's free, it's not free either because you're giving your time, your valuable, your valuable time to accumulate that information. So you have to decide for yourself which route that you want to go. And basically the structured route is the most valuable because you're going to in turn get information that's important to you to be able to use to build your, your business. You know, and that's, that's exactly it. And, you know, I think about some of the, um, the education that's sold out there. Like, you know, for instance, you know, universities, colleges, institutions, you know, that, um, uh, you know, whether it's a, a um, uh, what do you call that, um, you know, where carpenters and that go, there, there's whatever you call that there, uh, I forget the name of what they call those facilities, but anybody who's paying for an education, uh, here's, here's one thing that I find really, really funny. You know, there's there's network marketing companies that are out there, like Total Takeover and others that are selling education. And um, you know, when someone doesn't get their way, when when things don't go the way they want it, the immediate thing they want is a refund. Now, here's what's really funny: if you were to go to college or university or something like that to become a carpenter or a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer or something like that. You take it for a year and you go, or even three months, and you go, you know what, this is just a ripoff. I want my money back. You don't get a refund, okay? Once you start that, that's it. Whatever that particular part of the course was worth for that time frame, that money's gone. You've that, That's done. If you've paid for two or three years in advance, then they may give you a portion of that back. But once you've started the course, you don't get a refund. It's done, okay? You have bought and paid for that education. You started the course, and it's over. The people in network marketing are really funny because they'll go through and they'll come into a course like we have here. We, we sell it for $89.95. This is our course. And every month, that's what you're paying for. And you come in, and we got training in the back office, and they go through all that training, and they go through all that stuff, and then they say, you know what? This wasn't worth $89.95. I want my money back. Wait a second. You went in, you took our courseware, you took the courses, you got all the knowledge that we gave you, and now you want your money back? Right? This is why we talk about what's valuable, free or paid. And, and this is just an example I want to give you, that... Try going and registering for your local university or your college or something like that. Buy your books. Start your courses. Then go and ask them you want a refund for everything after you've been there for two months. See what happens. See how much money they give you back. Okay? Investigate that. Okay? Why people have that same mentality here thinking that they can just do what they want in network marketing it's like we don't have anything of value and yet and you can check with the critics out there you can check with with everything that's out there a anybody that's that's making money out there outside of our industry and they will tell you this is where the money is made every single person from Bill Gates to Donald Trump to any of these top guys out there even Sir Richard Branson has already said now that you know what the internet companies are the way to make money so, 
don't devalue us out there. Don't devalue your business, okay? Because whatever is out there on the internet is valuable. What's even more valuable is what you pay for on the internet. So, Andrew, hopefully I didn't take any wind out of your, your sails there. Over to you. Let's, let's get your thoughts. Can you hear me now? Yep, go ahead. Right, cool. Now, just about any time I come onto this uh, panel, uh, it's blowing wind into my sails. So I appreciate that, Carl. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of information already on this hangout today, and it's awesome stuff. Uh, what I have to say is basically going to say the same thing, just in a different way, uh, and especially with what uh, Rob said and what Joan said and what you said, Carl. Uh, but but I'm also going to add something to it, a different a different perspective of what we're talking about. Uh, first of all, I want to say when you're coming on and listening to these hangouts, if you do not bring a pen and paper, you're cheating yourself. You need to have a pen and paper. So I'm going to drone on for just a moment. A little bit of filler to give you time to get a pen and paper because you're going to want a pen and paper whenever you hear what I have to say. Uh, it's it's valuable information that you're getting on these these hangouts, and and it wouldn't surprise me if uh, these hangouts uh, end up turning into part of the uh, part of the product in the back office. So you get the opportunity to to listen and and participate live in real time for free. But to go back and check it out, you might end up having to. Uh, be a member some, at some point. So anyway, now that you have your pen and paper out, I want you to write down the word data, D-A-T-A, -T -A, and the word information, and put a line in between them, a slash, data slash information. I want you to consider this. Our brain is designed with our five senses to take in copious amounts of data every single second. It, you, it, would, it, would, it would blow your mind consciously, your conscious mind, whenever you realize just exactly how many computations your brain does and the amount of data that is taken in in, in terms of uh, binary bits of information. There's, there's billions and billions of bits of information that your, your brain takes in uh, from your five senses every single second. Now, that's just your five senses. That's your that's your uh, your conscious system. We have an unconscious system that that handles trillions and quadrillion, quadrillions and trillions, trillions and quadrillions of trillions of, of bits of information per second within inside our body. That's not even part of our consciousness, and the brain handles all of this data. Now you see the line, the slash that you put in between the word data and information. There's people on the internet looking at data. It's all white noise, and there's no information there until you tune into a word, into a pattern. That was a word that was used earlier. So until you take and, and see a pattern of data, it is not information. It's simply white noise. There's a, there's a society that's been in operation for, for decades on the planet called SETI. It's the it's the center for extraterrestrials for looking they're looking for extraterrestrial intelligence that they have uh, systems that listen to the to the sky and and identify patterns in all the white noise the white noise that these machines are listening to sounds a whole lot like the noise of a thousand or ten thousand fax machines going off all at once and these these computers separate all of these different uh, bits of data and oscillate signals and find patterns and tune in to those patterns and it becomes information and the information lets the system know whether it's a it's a pattern coming from a pulse off star or whether it's a radio transmission from the military or whether it's a radio transmission from a ham operator or or whether it's a of different types of radio signals and TV signals that, that are that are out there. And it oscillates the direction that they're coming from, having tuned into the data, identified a pattern, and now turns that data into information. And that information is then uh, uh, in a format to where you can study the information and learn about the characteristics of its source, of its intensity, 
of his, uh, his of his message. And so inside the information, you can get a message. So we put we put information out on these hangouts every day, and it's in that sea that Joan was talking about of, of white noise. It's out there in a sea of white noise, and it's not until you tune in and 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 get tuned in and focused to what we're saying. Uh, often enough to be able to decipher the message that we're telling you. A person can come to one of these hangouts and pick up a nugget, but you still don't have the message. You're not going to have the message until you get a part, become a part of the association. So the real information that you're looking for, if you're wanting to be successful in network marketing, even if you want to bring a, a brick and mortar business online and market it online, you're going to need to tune in and become part of the association in order to get the real message because the real message you can't buy the real message you know the, the best things in life are, 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 are free is so that say well what that means is is the you can't purchase the best things in life with money and you know you, you just can't because the best things in life are found inside of real relationships and you've got to create real relationships in order to get the real message so here today we're putting out we're putting out data uh, there's some information there, and it becomes information only whenever your mind tunes in to the to the signal, and and is able to identify the pattern, and that pattern then becomes information in your in your consciousness, and once in your consciousness, you're able to to tune in closer and closer and closer, and on a consistent basis because it's the transmission. This is a global transmission of the Total Takeover Hangout information. And whenever you tune into that, on a daily basis, you end up developing relationships. There becomes a no like, and trust factor among us that you haven't experienced before. And that no like, and trust factor is the doorway into the message that we're really transmitting to you. So what we have in front is a way to catch your attention, maybe if you're trying to tune in and look for particular things. For all of you who are looking to become successful with your current network marketing business, understand this. All of us here have a primary business, but we're not telling you what that primary business is. In order for you to know what our primary business is, you need to become part of the association. You need to get tied up with one of us in Total Takeover. Get back with the person that sent you to this video and say, hey, I want to become a life changer because I want to see what you're doing with Total Takeover in order to build your primary business and I'd like to know what your primary business is because you're not going to get that information until you are a member and, and have this association. The reason that I use Total Takeover is to make sure that the people that I'm attracting to my primary business are coachable and willing to get the information that they need in order to build our primary business. The information that's here at Total Takeover is an amalgamation of all the big leaders in the industry. How else are you going to be tapped into all of these major players across the whole industry in our profession if you're not in some sort of melting pot? So, if, like for instance, Rob is in a different primary than me. Carl has a different primary than me. So does Joan and doctor, uh, the doctor, good doctor here that's a mathematician. The doctor understands this data. Uh, math and data are synonymous. So you, you must identify a pattern inside the data and tune into it in order to get the message. So if when you tap into us and you get this message, then you're able to find out what the real deal is in order to grow your primary business bigger and faster. In so doing, you have the opportunity to make money in doing that. That's about all I have, Carl. I appreciate it. Back over to you. Well, thanks, Andrew. And just so everybody knows that I'm not white noise, although that you know half the time I'm on here I'm just noisy and I am white, so I don't know. Um, uh, just I just wanted to clear that up, just in case any of you might have been a little bit wondering. Oh, Carl's the white noise, right? So, Tracy, we're just talking about. Uh, welcome back, by the way. We're talking about how valuable we think free information is. And and one thing I want before we go to Tracy, I want everybody to think. How valuable do you think this information was that we just gave you here in the last 35 minutes? Was this something that had been worth paying for, or do you think it's just free? Okay. So, Tracy, let's go over to you and get your thoughts on, you know, how valuable you think free information is versus information you pay for. Thanks, Carl. Sorry I had to pop off here for a, a call just a few minutes ago, so I apologize for that. Uh, and I did miss everything. I'm sure there's been awesome content so far. So 
You know what? There's there's two trains of thought in that. This is kind of where where I come from because I always have considered myself as being a professional student. And ever since I, I graduated, you know, I went into college. Uh, I have taken a course almost every year since high school, and I've paid for it. I've gone to the colleges and I've gone through you know whatever marketing or nutrition or whatever the case may be. I always, in my mind, I want to get information from the source. I want to get the right information, the correct information, because if I'm going to be the best at what I do, then I need to do, and, and I know that uh, we saw that, uh, um, I think it was Ray Higdon actually just wrote out a $25,000 check for mentoring for himself and him and his wife, because he brings that more value to his team. Free, I think that um, Carl, you've got so much talent as, as everyone here does on on the, the on the panel here today, and and a lot of people out there. You know, I think that we give away so much stuff for free. Uh, well, we give advice for free too, because you know what? Everything comes everything comes with a price, really. If you take a look at it, if it's what you do with it that really matters. Um, you know, I think that that. People get confused in their mind that, I mean, if we're talking about our system here at, at, at Total Takeover specifically, is that people devalue, they don't, they don't have any skin in the game. You know, you could, you could get some really good content. I mean, look at, look at um, YouTube, for heaven's sakes. I mean, I am always searching out information on YouTube, and it's, and it's actually run by ego because somebody out there knows something and they want to be the authority on it, so they're going to post it. But it's not free. They've had to pay for their time and their effort of, to learn it. So, I mean, it's free to me to go and get it, but you've got to look at what it costs in the long run for them to be able to get that information and be able to put it together and put it together correctly. Is there a lot of people out there that do it incorrectly? Yes. So the challenge is de determining what's real, what's not, what's valuable, because you can have free that's valuable, you can have free that's, uh, that's garbage too, and it can lead you down the wrong path. So I think over the course of time you gain wisdom in being able to determine what's right, what's, what's good for you and what's not. So, you know, when you're getting information from people who have done something fantastic in their life, you know, if they've been really great marketers, Carl, I mean, what you've done with your website and, and assisting people with, you know, a real game plan, I mean, that has so much value. But, however, I mean, you give that to your team for free. You, you know, anybody who needs to help having, having this information, I mean, you give it away for free. But what was the cost of that? I mean, how many hours have you put into that? How many hundreds of hours have you put into that? How many thousands of hours and years have you put into that in learning all of that information to give it to other people? So the value in that is, is uh, I mean, is priceless. So, I mean, we have to determine, we have to determine what people's mindset is about when you say the word free. It's nothing is ever free. Because, I mean, you may get the information for free, but somebody somewhere had to pay for it. Somewhere, somehow, had to pay for it, putting it together, learning it, executing it, testing it, um, gathering the information, whether they've just, you know, um, paraphrased someone else. They still had to learn what that person has said, and they paraphrased it and put it out there. So, you know, I think that there's, if, there's, a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of opportunity in free, if you use it correctly. Um, take for instance, you know, our free three rollers in Total Takeover. That is a list builder. That's a massive list builder. You can go and get a list all day long in there just doing that. You've got an audience to speak to. Um, you know, being able to make it effective, because we've talked about in the past about, uh, you know, toasting our lists too, because nobody responds, nobody listens to it, nobody reads it. However, Look what you just did this week, Carl. Uh, on the tenth message that uh, one of your people got received, he uh, he actually did uh, opt in and then sign up. So you know, people have to understand the educational part of 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 anything you're going to do. Um, free gives you an opportunity to evaluate. Free free gives you an opportunity to um, get you into the next level. It makes to get you into the next gear. But people have been taught oh, over the years, I think, over the last three, I always say three years specifically, because I think that's when this industry online started to really go, go sideways. People associate free with income now. 
and that's where the that's where we've dropped the ball in educating people is that you you're not going to do anything from free you cannot generate a uh, hundred dollars out of zero it just is not going to work but if you put your skin in the game you put some money in the game that's how you're going to be able to actually improve I mean like these uh, the, the courses I mean you're not going to be able to just go and walk up to some well-known authority Tony Robbins and, and say hey Tony let's go for coffee I want to pick your brain it just isn't going to happen however you know when you pay you like when you pay to get quality rather than just advice and I know because Carl you and I talked about that earlier you know what you can get advice from anybody you want go get advice from your mother because I'm sure she'll be the first one to tell you what to do and what not to do you know and it's not always based on your best interest it's based on what they think is your best interest and we do the same in this industry for people too we give them advice is it always correct no because it's based on our needs not theirs so again we have to kind of analyze and really d determine um, that there is opportunities in free and again like for me I'm constantly I, I mean YouTube is my second home it's my online university I'm on there because I do a lot of uh, graphic media I do After Effects I do you know I'm always trying to figure out the next step how to do something specifically so I'm always hunting down an authority and there's some really good ones out there you know and I know who that and I've saved them on my channel so that I know who to go to to ask the questions so you know when you can go to one source and get all of that stuff I mean who wants to be a millionaire great show guess what it's not a lottery it's not a game this is an absolutely serious job it's an education that you need to do to find out what you need to do take yourself to the next level and you're never gonna get there on free never you'll build a list but what are you gonna do with that list can you speak to that list can you email to that list can you pick up the phone and talk to them intelligently about who you are and why they should follow you what kind of value do you have that you offer to these people and if you don't and all you can say is get in free and be at the top you've really missed the boat because that's not what this industry is based on so Carl holy crap that was good Let's uh, let's go across a panel. Let's get some some feedback on that, Rob. You know, give some feedback on what you've heard. Um, and again, you know, you're a guy who has um, a few primaries on the side, like Andrew says. You know, you you drive and 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 build your incomes off of multiple different things, and it's all because of the type of value, all the way from from free to paid. So I don't know if you want to talk on that a little bit. Yeah, I, I can do that. And I, yeah, Tracy, that was awesome. That was that was a really uh, really great uh, talk that you had there. So that really had me had me mesmerized. So very good job there. Um, because yeah, the um, the the free mentality, you know, is is one of the issues that we have in the uh, in the industry today. And I get it. You know, people, you know, money's tight. People are cautious and whatnot. Um, but we have to have confidence in our we have to have confidence in ourselves um so like when i'm working with somebody you know i often think to myself and you have to delicately talk about this sometimes you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or be rude but you know we we have the right to ask for compensation for our time um your time is valuable and a lot of people who are looking for everything to be free don't really have respect for you or your time and that's that's hard to say that's the elephant in the room that's that's some tough talk but it is true uh, I've had people ask me you know oh can you do this for me can you do that for me can you uh, you know alright that's fifty dollars an hour seventy five dollars an hour right I mean if I'm gonna am I gonna go ask a carpenter to build me a house um, for free I don't think so so it, it starts with you it starts with you starting to say to yourself I'm going to get out of the free mentality. I'm going to start, you know, having a little bit more faith and confidence and belief in my abilities and put a price on it. So I think when you're asking somebody to join Total Takeover for $89.95, that's the cost of doing business. You're getting, you're asking for compensation for your time because you're going to help them, you're going to mentor them. Um, and as Tracy said, I think the best thing that I heard from Tracy is, um, you know, you're not necessarily selling the company, you're selling yourself. This is what I have to offer. 
And I and as Carl said, I'm a guy that's been around a long time, and I have a plan, you know. And I have plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, and maybe plan E, and maybe F, G, blah blah blah, all the way to Z. Because you talk to, you have to become a a student of this. I think all of us in this industry here, this community, this this uh, this company, whether we've come in fully vested or not, um, you know, have to understand that um, we are marketing specialists. We are internet marketing consultants. The other day on the Hangout, we were talking talking about what's your, how would you describe yourself? What's your title? And I said I'm a lead generation specialist. So how about okay, just say it, say that I am, just and I am, but it just you know. Definitely believe me when I say that. Um, think about what a lead generation specialist would do. If I'm calling somebody who's in a primary MLM, network marketing, uh, lotions and potions type company, and, um, and I say that with love because I've been involved in those myself. Um, so I'm on the phone with them, and I'm talking about total takeover and the education and the pay plan, plan one and the pay plan two. But what if I can say to them, you know what, I will help you, I will teach you how to generate your own leads for free that will help you, because the, the first question people are going to have, how quick am I going to get my money back? What are you going to do for me? Okay, so, and I think there's that credibility factor. Everybody expects you to say, yeah, the plug into the company and everything's there and, and you're going to be, you're going to be fine. And that may be true, but I think that turns a lot of prospects away. If I can add something additional of extra value as an individual outside of what the company here does, um, you know, that's powerful. So keep, keep growing, keep learning, keep working with your, your upline and your groups and your teams. I, I love the networking that goes on here. I love the fact that I can't sit here and advertise what I do, but I'm respected enough where I can talk about some experience that I have and some, some things that I've, um, you know, uh, learned over over the years so that that's what's great about everything we have here I was just talking to somebody on Skype uh, just a little bit ago about boy I'm really happy with the way things are coming together and that's a very loaded statement because I've got all kinds of I'm a systems guy pieces parts you know this is one of my pieces and parts I want to come in and be a part of a community and help and support people so it's the pieces and the parts all coming together and I am extremely pleased happy and honored uh, to be a part of this entire deal. Back to you, Carl. Awesome, Rob. You know, I'm, gl I'm glad you, you talked on that because, you know, all of this has to do, like, like Tracy started and then went to you, it all has to do with valuing yourself. I mean, I, I sometimes struggle with that with myself. You know, I know that personally I'm a valuable commodity, okay, that, that I can sell myself. I'm worth what I sell myself for. You know, and like you said, you know, offering that extra value in there, like you know, when you're when you're a marketer, and you're like a lead specialist, or maybe you're a, a, a social media specialist or something. You've got something extra to bring to the table to add value to what's already a value there. Okay, and and that's what I try to do. I try to to offer more value, like you know, some some one-on-one -on -one coaching or whatever it may be. Um, I offer that little bit of extra value. But with that comes a price, okay? You can either pay me by the hour to teach you or you can come in and grow with us as a business. So that's how it is for everybody. You know, you, just remember, each and every one of you who are listening to this, you are a valuable commodity, okay? If you're coming in, you join this program, and you go in and you take any little bit of the training or you take anything away from what you get on these hangouts here and you utilize it now you've got some power behind you because you've got some knowledge that other people may not have and that makes you a valuable commodity okay if you could turn around and spend 10 minutes with somebody that you've just introduced to the program and they've come into total takeover you say you know what here's what I'm gonna do to help you get going um, you know, I learned this myself. I'm going to help you miss a step, and I'm going to help you go, and this is what you're going to do. Boom, boom, boom. That's a valuable commodity that somebody is looking for. You know, like like Rob says, you know, everybody can say, well, you can just join in and plug in here and blah, 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 blah. You know what? Everybody says that. And people, quite frankly, today are sick of it. You know, um, I'm sick of hearing it from people because a lot of times 
there may be something in a company that just maybe is broken. Maybe their their structure is broken. And you having that little bit of knowledge can be the bridge in between that. Okay? So always remember uh, that people aren't necessarily joining companies, they're joining people. Okay? It's you need to sell yourself before you can sell the business. Okay? Dr. Michael, you do a lot of that yourself. I know you've got a lot of different business interests too, and this is kind of what your thought pattern is, I think. So come on in and give give a little bit of, of feedback on that too, if you wouldn't mind. Well, it's uh, I've been very excited in listening to everybody here, and um, I must say I've heard a lot of good news. And yeah, I mean, what can I say? There is not I really can't say much uh, to it, Carl, because we've said it all. We can just sum it up. And uh, um, value is of yeah. I wouldn't call it a commodity as you probably, but in the in, in the principle, it's the same thing. I mean, I go out to the people that I know, and they know me about my talents, and it took me a lot of time, efforts, and money, and dedication to achieve what I'm doing today. And uh, yeah, in one way or the other, they pay me for what I'm doing already for years. You know, but uh, on principle, I would say um, we've got something that everybody is looking for in TTO. I think we've got that uh, little niche that is needed to really convert the uh, networkers into some really wise networkers with all the credentials behind it. Because I, what I really liked is what I saw from Andrew when he said, "You got fired because you didn't pass the test on TTOs." You know, so I really liked that a lot because it really made me laugh. You know, and I said, "Hey, I think that's how it should be. This is a virtual university, and people have to decide for themselves if they want to do it or they don't want to do it." If I put my part then I will not be the one that gives everything for free, for sure not, because I'm paying for it, and my knowledge is a verse of value as well. But of course, I understand that people uh, that uh, have been left down many, many years, I've never made it so far, that they have their doubts that I will have to give them some free advice, and here we go back to the advice. And that advice would be do the same thing as I do, because I believe in it, and at least what I'm doing right now, because if not, I wouldn't be here. And that's what people believe. That's why they follow me, because they know when Michael is doing this, uh, there's something real behind it. He's not just going out to any company and doing things, because I've got many things on uh, my pattern like you have and everybody else. But we are here united, and uh, that really is, uh, yeah, it's it's not just the networker's dream comes through. I think that is how it should be always. And if we can unite it, if we can be the, the part of the puzzle that brings them together, that makes the internet uh, being more m more favorable to the rest of the networkers, and just as a few, I would say I'm full for it. And uh, let's, let's come together and let's make it happen. Awesome. Thanks for that, that tidbit there. You know, again, we're putting a little bit of everything into, into this. Holy cow, look who came out of the the shadows. My god. I, is that Val? I mean, you know, I haven't seen this. I think it is. Hey. Val, welcome. Welcome well, to I the heard, I heard it was free so I could afford it. If it wasn't free, I'm not going to be here. I'm looking for spillover. <laughs> Well, you know what? You came in kind of at the right time because we're just we're we're actually talking about the value of free versus the value of paid. So you kind of jumped in right at the right part here. So let's let's get your take on that before we go across to the rest of the panel. Well, what do you want free for? Honestly, I mean, free is a mindset. Free is poverty consciousness. Uh, you know, people want to. Well, if we're talking about certain things are okay for free, I guess if somebody's donating something to a church or to a wonderful cause, but on the internet where people, Andrew looks great, is he driving a car? Wow, that, that, you can only do a that. Big, I'm driving a big diesel truck, well. Holy cow, man, hope you keep your eyes on the road there. Uh, you know, I, I think for what it is, I, I really don't like the word free in the entrepreneurial world because I think it reinforces um, a style of behavior that's not needed, wanted, or desired. Uh, in any business, I, I wouldn't want to. I would. I don't want free anywhere, really. I, I mean, I know we have it in total takeover, uh, but again, I'll, I'll be honest with you. My philosophy is, I I would like to see the free go, and I'm old school. Everything I do, I mean, I'm in the gas and electric industry outside of network marketing, and you know, we're we're brokering multi million dollar deals, and I I just can't I can't relate to free when I think of wealth creation, and um, 
becoming successfully free in the game of life. I mean, how do you become successful for free? There's, there's, you're not putting anything on the table. There's no sacrifice. There's no risk. You know, it, there's, there's nothing. I mean, it's, it's just uh, free is a great word for kids in certain areas of life, like I said, Carl, but I, I really think there's no place for it in, in business. Um, there's no such thing as a free lunch in the game of life. If I buy you lunch, I promise you, you're going to be buying somebody else lunch down the road. It's just the way life is. There's, you know, the good things in life. Some, so I think did somebody once to say the good things in life are free. The good things in life are not free. You know, there's there's a sacrifice in everything. That you know, having kids. People think they have this dream. Oh, when I grow up someday, I'm going to have kids. Kids are not free. They come with a price. Being married comes with a price. Having a car comes with a price. Waking up in the morning comes with a price. Everything has a price. Every time I turn the water tap on, it comes with a price. I get my bill at the end of the month. There's no such thing as free, you know. <clears throat> so when I think about it, I'm, I think about all these people out there on the Internet. They whine and they complain and they bitch about this and they bitch about that. They want free. They can have free. But they can also understand the package that comes with free. There's a lot of baggage that comes with free. And personally, I don't have room in my house for free. So I'm not interested. If any of you want to send me anything for free, it's like even when people want to sell you health and nutritional products in our industry, they'll say, oh, well, I'll send you some stuff for free. I'll send you some free samples. Well, why are you going to do that? I'm not going to value it, number one. I'm not going to use it, number one. Uh, there's just no emotional connection to free. Just imagine if everything in life was free. Um, and I think life is full of lessons, and, and I think that's why life is designed the way it is. You've got to pay a price. And if you want to bring religion into play, which I'm not a religious person in any which way, shape, or form, but I believe there's a price to pay in religion. You know, somebody sacrificed their life. There's a price to pay. So, in, and that can be in, in all different religions. That can be in war. Nothing is free. Politics. Nothing is free. So, <clears throat> what did you guys say? What did you guys and gals say about free? I don't really like the word free. I like it. I like it when I play Monopoly, get out of jail free. That's pretty cool, but. You know, outside of that, I, I, I can't psychologically relate to free in the home-based business uh, world. And I'm, I'm glad that Dave um, executed a game plan to put the $5, you know, trial in there because you've got to give up something. You know, you've got to give up something. And uh, in everything, you've got to give up something, man. There's just, it's just the way it is. You go to the gas station. You've got to separate yourself from money to get gas to fuel your car to get you to where it is you want to go. It's the same thing on the internet. If you want to get somewhere on the internet, you got to give up money out of your pocket in order to fuel, um, you know, the action, the knowledge, the action to take place. I mean, what, if if there are no business opportunities, how many of us would really be on the internet, addicted to the internet all day, if we knew we couldn't turn it into a monetary, you know, event? Uh, if it was all free, sitting on Facebook was all free, then people could say, well, Facebook is free. Well, is it really free? I don't know if it's free. You're giving up time. Time is money. And at the same time, most people are executing a game plan in order to utilize Facebook to create money. So free is just a really disgusting, overused word on the Internet that only attracts the wrong people, um, which I can't figure out why they're not smart enough to figure it out. Why the hell would you want something for free? I want nothing from any of you for free. If, if I'll, I'll pick up the tab, whatever it is. If I see value in it, I will pay you for your services. That's just the way it is. My lawyer doesn't work for me for free. He doesn't say, Val, I'm going to do this for you for free. You know, there's a $475 invoice after every hour. So you figure it out. I don't know. Where, where did, where did y'all get to a free today? How appealing? Did anyone love free? Did Was anyone attracted to free? Is, is free a beautiful thing today? Or is it only a free a, a beautiful thing in the world of contamination and other things that I, other things I probably shouldn't say on this call. <laughs> it's false. Well, you know what? It, it's wide open, and, and you kind of hear, we're just talking about, you know, basically it boils down to this. You get what you pay for, okay? And, and that's what it is. Uh, Tracy, I don't know, do you want to comment on that? Well, I just, coming back to what I was talking about earlier, it's just, it's a falsification. There, it, Nothing is free because you have, it's, a, it's an exchange. So, I mean, that's, that's the, the tragedy that we've done in the industry over the last few years is that's just been a marketing term. And, uh, you know, like I say, you, you can find things out there that you think are free, but they're not because somebody has put their, their time and effort into doing whatever they've had to do. So you're going to have to exchange something along the way. So the word free really doesn't even exist 
because there's always some kind of exchange that takes place. So it's it's really just become a, a sort of a marketing term that um, that like you're absolutely right, Val. What it does is it breeds that disease in people's brains where they just think that they can do nothing because zero will never ever, in my calculations, ever equal a hundred dollars. It's just monetarily and and physically not possible to do so. So when people try and pitch you on these deals that say it's free, get in, you can make a bazillion dollars and you don't have to sponsor anybody, you don't have to do anybody. I mean, you got to think about what the what the mindset on the people that say that and the mindset of the people who accept that when they didn't go to the same school that I went to because that calculation is just not possible, right? Well, the other part of it too, if there's an agenda, I mean, you know, a lot of people. There's a lot of great free stuff out on the internet. Let's let. I mean, I'm not. I don't mean to be overly bearing with it. There's there's great free information out there, but that free information still comes with a price. You got to opt into people's stuff. They own you. They're going to keep bombarding you with stuff. There's always a trade-off. There's a trade-off in relationships with a husband and wife. There's a trade-off, you know, in boyfriends and girlfriends. You give me this, and I'll give you that. You give me this, and I'll give you that. It's, we all start off with five bricks. And then you try to see who gets the most bricks off each other. Then one person becomes consumed and they don't have any bricks left anymore. So they have nothing to give. Therefore, they're not of value anymore. Then hasta la vista, baby. You're out of my life. And that could be online too. When you realize the person online is just taking from you and taking from you and not giving and uh, doing, you know, there's people out there that I don't even answer their questions on Facebook anymore because they're trying to deplete me and I don't have time. I don't have time. Val, look at this. Val, look at that. Val, check my stuff out. Val, check this out. There's no value in me doing that with my time right now. I don't have time to do that. So I can't allow myself to lose focus, be depleted, give my energy up to somebody else or another being that I don't have a vested interest in. You know, it's, it's to take me away from what it is that I have a vested interest in that there's a ripple effect. There's a ripple effect. Every, every action you know, is, is a form of energy that is rippled out there like dropping a stone in a pond. It goes out there. And so I don't want anyone interfering with my ripple. So stay away from my nipple and my ripple. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of, one of the funny things is that, like we had just talked about, uh, Rob had just finished talking about it, and same with Dr. Michael. It's like um, what we were talking about is, is when we offer something for free, it's not actually free. So, like, for instance, let's say we had something of added value to add, like, maybe a, a technique or something we have. You know, what a lot of us are doing, and like what I do, what Rob does, Dr. Michael, and a few others, yourself, Val, is if you want that little tidbit, this is what you've got to do to get it. And, you know, in our case, it's eighty nine ninety five. This is what you've got to do. You've got to come in here. This is what your cost is going to be to get this additional free information that is not actually part of what you're paying for. Okay, so that's kind of the free information when it's actually not free, you know. But it's it's free, but it's not free because there's a value that comes with it. I, you know, because we're talking about how valuable our time is, you know. Like we're a valuable, like I call myself a valuable commodity out there, you know. If if someone wants information from me, um, I have the right to charge them what I think my value is worth. Yeah. You know. Now I could I could make that any number. Like Rob says, it, it could be fifty or seventy-five or a hundred. Um, I do it according to whatever program I'm in. Here's what my time will cost to you. This is what you've got to do. You've got to come here. You've got to register here. You've got to pay this, and then you can have my time. But until then, you're not going to get it. You know, I can give you a different price. It won't be as cheap as that. You know, it'll be a different price, and we can work on that if you want. But this is where you can go, and the, this is one of the ways that I give my time, basically, uh, again, free. That's that draw word, right? That's that, that that marketing word that draws people to you, right? Same thing with Total Takeover when we did the free thing, right? That was to draw them in. That was That's how we were corralling the, the people in so that we could then sell them the eighty nine ninety five because that was the exactly. ultimate goal, okay? It's, it's, it's it's fear of loss. It's fear of value. And TV infomercials, study TV infomercials. If you want to study anything, study TV infomercials. Those guys are the bomb. You know, and if you order within the next 21 seconds, we'll throw in an extra bottle free. They're not giving you anything free. The bottles cost them $1.50. They're selling it for $39.95. They're just giving you an extra $1.50 value there. But 
the average person is not educated. That's why it's worth becoming you know, educated in this industry, become knowledgeable so you understand what everything means. There's an interpretation, a perception, and then some people think they're getting incredible value because, you know, the guy on the TV is throwing in an extra videotape for free or an extra, you know, brush in a comb for free, you know, that does this little trick and has a ponytail on it and stuff like that. It costs them 75 cents in China to make and they're giving it away for 39, 49 bucks. So yeah, free is a very you know yeah I mean yeah I mean we did it at total takeover 176 thousand people they they didn't even know what they were buying into no you have to, you, three quarters of them didn't even know what it was they didn't know it's just free 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 you know so but the thing is is you get a database out of it and now you can work with it so the price is if you're going to opt in well guess what you've opted in and you're allowing us to communicate back to you. So it wasn't free. Nothing's free, you know. Nothing's free. And that's and that's exactly it. Um, you know what? Uh, let's let's get some last thoughts across the panel here. Um, let's, you know, Joanne. Let's go over to you, and then we'll go to Joan, and then over to Andrew. And hopefully, Andrew, uh, you're keeping your eyes on the road still, because um, you know the white noise is is. Talking. How come my name? How come my name's Carl? My name's Carl Halvidsson on this. Because I logged in that way. We logged in on the same account. So. Oh, I see. Okay. I thought, I, thought was white noise. I thought I was getting my name changed for free here today. So. No, no. That just made you more special today. Okay? <laughs> yeah, You're talking about white noise, and I'm that white noise today. So. <laughs> Beautiful. Sorry, okay. go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. I'm sitting nope. here freaking out. My name's Carl all of a sudden. Yeah. Wow. Feel special. <laughs> that's, the price. that's the price I had to pay for coming to this hangout today. I had to get a new name out of the deal. I had no choice. Anyhow, go ahead. Anyway, no, that's okay, Val. Thanks. Um, so I'd like to thank all the panel members for all their input. I think we had a really awesome hangout today. Um, so the price of, well, really, the price of free. Um, like you can go to YouTube, you can uh, look up a video for free, but really at the end of the day, you're you're taking time, you know, away from something else, your family or whatever, to look up that information and to learn. Um, and also the people who put that video on, and everybody on the panel, like we have all put time, energy, money, effort, sacrifice into learning, you know, network marketing, learning how to market, talk to people, and. Um, learning how to sponsor. So really the free at the end of the day is really not free. There is some, like we've all talked about, there is some sort of, you know, sacrifice that we have made. And um, so yeah, those are my thoughts. <laughs> Great, thanks. Again, I just want to add to that. She, Joanne brought up a really good point that it just really clicked. I Sorry to interrupt, but you know what? Uh, anytime your mind shift gears, it's not free. Uh, Joanne's right. You're sacrificing something else that you're on in order to do something for somebody else's agenda. Uh, you know, it's just the way it is. Energy is constantly bombarding us. There's frequency going through us, all kinds of interesting things. Uh, you know, buying for our time to take our thoughts away from, from one thing. And I can give an example. Today, Tracy was doing something, but I found a way to go on Skype and hit the call button in order to take Tracy away from one thing and selfishly have her thoughts and her comments and her opinions and her perceptions in, in my sphere. So I took her away from one project to be a part of what I needed her to do over here and she was helpful in doing that. But I just use that as an analogy because that's exactly what we're all doing is even with this hangout, what are we doing? We're, we're hoping that people will stop what they're doing. That's the price they have to pay to focus on uh, the good, the bad, the ugly here, what's right or what's wrong or what's... Right, and I had whatever. to free up my time to do that. That's right. There you go, right? Yeah. <laughs> and here's one other thing I want to add to something, and I don't think a lot of people look at this, okay? You know, people say, I have a lot of time, I can go and look for this. If you really want to value something, the most priciest thing in the entire world, the most priceless thing in the entire world is your time. Because once it's gone, you can never get it back. Okay? So if you want to spend all the time, all of your, your time, which you think is has no value, to go out and, and try and figure things out yourself rather than spending $89.95 or something like that to learn it when in, a, in a shorter time span, think about just how valuable your time is. Because you know what? We all have an expiry date. We never know when that is. And, and that's, where, that's where time 
becomes your most valuable asset you have. So think <coughs> about that before we move on. Sorry, Carl, you're, you know what? You're absolutely right. And I talked about this earlier too. Is is because I have always been like a professional student. I love education. Um, it really is what feeds me. It feeds my brain. It feeds my soul. It keeps me alive. If you're not growing, you're dying. And I mean, I could let's just if I was were to pick a topic that I wanted to learn, any one specific topic. I mean, I could go out and spend six months researching it and trying to find the right people, the right videos, the right information, and I could probably find a great lot of data out there for free. However, if I wanted to get that proper information and know it's the correct information and know I'm going to learn it from the person that is going to, that already has done that, whether it be through, a, through an education source of whatever you, you de deem as the, as the uh, authority, um, usually it's the people who have done it, not the people that have taught it. It's the people that you want to model yourself after. Um, and I've, I've been in, I can't even tell you how many thousands and tens of thousands of dollars I have paid on college courses because I want to learn it the right way. I want somebody to show me that knows what they're doing. So, you know, these people, I mean, if you, if you, my time is valuable and to be able to pay, you know, several thousands of dollars if that's what I choose to do is because I want to learn something the correct way. Um, you know, if you can only spend eighty nine ninety five, like I mean, I, I just blows my mind that people don't don't understand that. Um, because again, looking back, nothing is free. There, that's 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 a fallacy. It's not a real word. Um, so I think that's the challenge that that um, you know people don't value themselves enough to put that time and effort into bettering themselves. Like we said, like you did, Rob, as well. Is you know what, what value do I have? And if I don't even have any value for myself, I better think real hard about that, because you know, in this industry, you've got to take a look at yourself and say, would I join me? And what do I need to do to improve that? And that's a steady improvement. This this industry is not like you just don't decide one day I'm going to become a network marketer and like you walk through the door and it's done. It's never, never ending. It's all about the, the journey. and It's about the education. It's about the people. It's about your social skills. It's about your speaking and skills. It's about your, your vision and your creativity. It's so many things that are put together. And, you know, it's, it's interesting to see that that's the biggest, that for me is the biggest challenge in this industry is teaching people exactly what network marketing is and it is a cost and when you it, it network marketing is very simple it's not easy but it's very very simple if people could just figure that out and understand that it is a learning process um, you know and what about I, I, this is if you're ever going to do anything the, the, the right way this is the environment to be in when you've got these kind of people this kind of leadership around you when you listen to where they speak and the, and the way that they interact with people that's the price. I mean, that's what you're looking for. That's the gold nugget. And uh, and if people could just get into their minds that that's the learning process that they absolutely need, not just for this industry, but it's for life too, because it's all about the relationship, and it and it's all about how you how you play that game of life, like you say, Val, right? Dedicate your life. To I want to. I want to help bring this process. into focus for yeah. folks. We've talked yeah. free now enough. To he throws. Two of us are going over <laughs> each other. There. Go ahead, Andrew. If you're not frozen, in time. Well, see, there's the price to pay. He 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 tried to overwrite me there with his speech, so he froze. I just put a spell on him. He's frozen now. He doesn't. So that's the price he has to pay. So, <laughs> Andrew, you're funny. I don't even know what I was saying. But anyhow, no, it's, there, there's a price to pay. In, in, in our world, it's either prosperity consciousness or poverty consciousness, and you can only attract what you are. And uh, that's, that's it. And that, there's, there's, I don't know of any alternatives in this industry. There's, there's no escaping one for the other. You, you know, well, you can escape one for the other, but there's no escaping one or the other, I should say. You're, you either or you're not. I mean, that's just the way it is. You must be in order to do in order to have. So... In representation of that, what Tracy said, ask yourself the question. Um, okay, uh, somebody has to hang it, leave. I don't know who that is, but anyway, I'll be off here in a second. Uh, whatever I was going to say sounds good, anyhow. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know what I was going to say. 
<laughs> it's okay. We got Dr. Michael had to leave, so sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So what was I going to say then? I was going to say something. Um, I said you got to be in order to do in order to have, and then I had a thought, and then I saw this sign come up. I thought you guys were trying to blow me off the air here, <laughs> and then it just totally. I lost my train of thought, so I do apologize for that. Um, That's <laughs> okay, Carl. We forgive you. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> Carl, I can, I, can I have a, a couple of minutes? Okay. I just want to say that, you know, many people are a product of their environment, and we have a lot of people that have the Freddie the freeloader mentality. If it isn't free, then they don't want any part of it. So really, individually, we've got to choose the environment that will best develop us toward what our objective is really going to be in life. So we need to analyze our life in terms of the environment that we're in. Is this environment moving us forward in life, or is this environment putting a blockade and preventing us from moving forward? Are the things around us helping us towards success? If they're not, then the only one that can change that is us. So why are we holding back? Are we holding back because we maybe have the lazy mentality that we want everything for nothing? If that's the case, then you're never going to move forward. You're never going to advance. And so we have to make that decision in life, and it's the only one that can make it is us ourselves. Do we want to move forward? Do we want to have a better life? Do we want to really um, prove to ourselves that we can add something to society? If that's the way we feel, then the first thing we need to do is get educated the proper way so that we can make um, a better place in this world. And the best way to do that is to get involved in education. The best place to go for that is total takeover because it's all there. It's all lined up for us and it's going to save us a lot of time and time is money because everything is there that we need to move forward to build a business online. Thank you, Joan, for that. There's some great trainings popping up, by the way. The Instagram training is going to be up here in the next couple of days, which is hot. Thousands of free leads, so you don't have to pay anything. And then uh, the Facebook. One of the things that I really loved what Joan said there, what I got out of that whole wonderful presentation was Freddie the Freeloader. I love that line, Freddie the Freeloader. Um, I, I think I'll call it Contact Dave and see if we can, instead of we had tire kickers out there, I think that offended people. Do you think it would offend anyone if we put on the PowerPoint presentation? Or you could be a Freddy the Freeloader. <clears throat> what do you think? Do you think that the international community would find some sort of, you know, uh, superstition with Freddy Freeloader out there? What do you think? It's not going to cause a problem, is it? Oh, I think so. But you know, um, my my opinion is we keep it where it is. Uh, okay. You're always going to find somebody. You're going to. I love that Freddy the Freeloader thing, but you're always going to find somebody, Val. That I love it. Freddy the Freeloader. I've never heard that line before. <laughs> All the Freddies are going to want to leave now. We're, the change the conference call. Yeah. We're talking over each other. Sorry about that. Anyhow, I'll shut up because I like to talk too much. Go ahead. No, that's that's fine, man. You know, um, you know, unless we wanted to change it. No, we wouldn't want to change it to Carl. No, that, that would be a bad one. <laughs> well, here's the bottom line on this, and I like to always use that term because it is monetary. And the most important, the most important thing you could ever invest in ever in your life is yourself. Um, and if you don't value yourself enough to do that, then uh, you know I, I don't even know what to say past that. Um, and everybody's kind of got that "what's in it for me" mentality today. I think that's kind of the way we've raised our society. Is you know, there we we take kids even when they're really young. They're, there's no competition anymore. It's everybody gets a free ribbon because they participated. So I mean, it's kind of like the culture that we've developed over the last I don't know. 30 years or something, I think, and I don't think that it's, it's beneficial to anybody because think people have a, uh, they have, they think they have a right for everything. It's, it's an entitlement and mentality that we were creating, and it's unfortunate because a lot of that, that culture that we've developed is now being brought into the adult world because those children, that when we started changing that, because of course we were told 
that you know we were violating people by doing this and everybody has to succeed and that's not true everybody doesn't there's always a chain of, of the people the winners and the the people that always strive to be at the top and, and to surpass other people in the race so if we take that away it kinda goes back to our basic societal um, principles about survival if there's no if there's nothing there for us to 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 strive for and to be better at then if we had to survive back in those days we'd all be dead right yeah oh, yeah you know you, you also have um, uh, what was I, oh, I forgot what I was gonna say now see I got a Val moment now or is that a Carl <laughs> moment I'm not sure <laughs> There's right. one of those moments happening oh she's not gonna shut up over to you <laughs> No, I, I'm I'm good. I still can't get over Freddie the Freeloader. I still love that line. I got to use it somewhere in my presentation. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I, I got that out of today's call. Uh, yeah, what happened to Rob? Oh, uh, Rob? Yeah, Rob had to leave. Um, he had a, a meeting. So same with Dr. Okay. Michael. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm good. I'm good. I don't need to say anything else right at the moment. Well, I remember the last thing I, I want to say here now. Um, you know. When Tracy was kind of, uh, of of topping on that now with people, I I think that what's happening is is just in, in the world in general, um, you know, with with companies that are cutting back and um, putting more work on on people, and it's causing more and more um, stress and tension because they're do, they're having to do more and more for less and less, and they're trying to find an escape, and when they come here. They read the crap that's all being promoted, misleading, and all that deviant type of marketing that's out there. They're, they're being sold on that, thinking that, okay, now I can get rid of all of this crap, this, this job that I have that I'm doing for three people. I can go over here and, and do very little for nothing or even for free, right? And, and this, is, this is the thing that's really kind of destroyed our world uh, in network marketing here in the last 10 to 15 years. Is it's the deviant marketing that's going on? People that will say anything anybody wants to hear to get them to, to empty their wallet, right? And and then you get companies like us that come up and we just you know we lay it on the line that this is this is what you're going to get for your money. There's there's no free ride. There's none of this kind of stuff. And and I'm even starting to see a little bit of that coming out in other companies. They're changing their little tactics now. On there saying, look, you know, we have a matrix here, but you know, th there's no free rides here. There's nothing guaranteed, and all that. I'm seeing them changing now everything, because I think what's happening now is we're drawing, like you said, Val, we're drawing laziness. We're drawing people under with with misconceptions of actually what's, what's going on, and I don't know. And, and then when we finally try to lay it on the line, we look like the bad guy. Well, it's like the cycler programs. I saw one guy in our Facebook room. He was uh, promoting, I think he was promoting like eight different cyclers. And people were asking him, why don't we just focus on the first one, you know? And he would defend why, you know, it's time to get in. And it's just recycling the same people again. And it's just taking, it's just, it's just like throwing shoes in a closet. They have no purpose in there other than stinking it up. And that's what happens in the cycler. They stink it up. <clears throat> throwing all these people in there, taking a position, locking it up for what? It's just... Yeah. There's no logic to it. There's no production to it. Imagine if, if you went to, 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 to one of the most successful companies in the world like Walmart or, or McDonald's and nobody came to the window to serve you. Yeah. We, don't, you know, we don't have to. We're sitting in the back. It's free. Help yourself. I mean, people are just going to walk away, you know. And there's still people today. Even when there was a big adjustment for people. You, you all, you're all old enough to remember this, but remember when... Uh, you would have to go to a gas station and they literally had people like myself when I was 15 years old I would come out of a building and I would pump gas into your car and then they brought out the self-serve well there was a resistance to that self-serve for a while people were still hunting down where can I get service where can I get service so everything's service oriented until you basically take it away from people you know what I mean so you know self-serve now you look at self-serve you self-serve it comes to the price you live in Canada, you got to get out in minus 30 degree weather, fill your car up, and then you go into a warm shack to pay somebody after. I mean, there's a price to pay, you know, so they figured it out, you know. Well, or, or you go to Domo because they're the only ones left that the <laughs> guys that do that. So at minus 40, I go to the ones where they fill it for me. <laughs> yeah, they, they only have them on the north side. We don't have them on the south side over here for us, for us people. 
But you know only, what? Only for, the, only for the rich people on the north side of town. Us poor people in the southwest, man, with the golf courses and the big houses, we get no service over here. That's why our property taxes are so high, and we still don't even get garbage collection. We have to take it to the dump ourselves. Oh, but. Wow. but you know what? You said something very specific, Val. You said people get into the into the industry, and we tell them to take a position. So that means to come and park your car and don't do anything. You know, you pulled into a spot. There's no activity based on that. It's taking a position. We've told people to do that. So, you know, we have to change our dialogue in that, res in that regard, too, because we have to tell people need to be told what to do. There's no doubt about that. You know, what you, can't, you can't expect your business to grow up. You're not telling people what to do. Look, you need to show up at the webinar. You need to do this. You need to log in your back office. You need to listen to this uh, recording. You need to do this. You need to do that. So if you just tell people to come and take a position, and whether it be a free one or not, whether they paid for it or not, that's telling them that they don't need to do a thing. And well, Tracy, this is why, hang on, Val, this is why, I'm going to let you come in. This is why Val actually says on his, on his webinars, we don't want you to come in and take a position. We don't want you to join us. We want you to launch your business with us, right? So he's actually telling them they've actually got to do that. And, and, and I think that's what's made the difference for those of us who are actually serious in there and actually building the business. We've actually listened and launched rather than joined and sat. Like you said, Tracy. Go well, ahead, here, here, here's, here's the really corrupt thing. And, you know, talk about, talking about, it comes back and bites you in the tushy. Check this out. So we take a position in another company, all right? And it's in my wife's name because I'm, too, I'm doing my thing. I, I've been around the block too long. We don't need to do that. People want to use my name to leverage and stuff. So we put it in my wife's name because she likes the products and everything. But the promise was this. Don't worry about it. Come on in, take a position, and we'll build it out for you. We'll sponsor people underneath you. We'll even give you sponsorships. Now, I went to the back office just out of fun because I saw my credit card got whacked, right? Um, and my wife loves the products anyhow, so it's all good. We don't care about that. But what I'm saying is that's deceptive marketing. What, what they, they haven't done nothing for me. I haven't seen my sponsorships. I'm not at any of these incredible levels that I'm supposed to be at. There's nothing. I don't have it. I don't have an organization, and it's. I deserve it. But I. But I'm not complaining about it. I'm not saying anyone's bad. Sure, I was lied to. Sure, I was manipulated. But still, you know, I got exactly what I deserve. But I'm not doing it anyhow. You know, we're still going to stay with it for the products. But the bottom line is, people BS you, and they'll manipulate you and lie to you to get you in an organization, and they won't deliver on what they say they're going to do for you. So <clears throat> just tell people the truth. Tell them this, I can get you in for free, it absolutely sucks. You're going to look at your downline report in three months from now, it's going to absolutely suck, but don't worry about it, all right? Just keep paying your auto ship, and you'll love the product, don't worry about it. Everything about me sucks, and don't worry about it. Just get in there and take your position, lock it in, and maybe someday something will happen, and you might make money, but I'll tell you right now, there's nothing to promise you. Just tell people the truth instead of lying to them. That's that's my point. My point is, and I I, I got to tell you something. I, and I, I shouldn't say this on a, on a webinar, but you know where I you know where I see most of this coming from? Europe. I hate to tell you that Europe is famous for it. Now I've I've learned so much in Total Takeover. Not about all Europeans. That's not to knock all Europeans. North Americans are can 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 be bottom feeders too. But there was a lot of people in Europe, man. That man, holy cow. Uh, some of the things they were doing to get people into into this program and, and some of their cycler programs, I couldn't believe what I was. I thought, man, I thought I knew it all. I felt like a seven-year-old naive, innocent kid when I saw what was going on there. But that's the sickness and the mentality that's out there. Just tell people the truth. Look, I want to screw you. I want to rip you off. I just want you to take a position in here. Don't worry about it. Let me take advantage of you. I'm just telling you the truth. That's what people should do instead of, promising them something they're not going to deliver. If I tell you I'm going to build something out for you, I, you know, I better be able to back that up. If I tell you I'm going to sponsor three people and give you those three sponsorships away to you so you can qualify for this, uh, you know, just be honest with people. That's all I'm saying. If you, want to, if, if you want to be a parasite on the Internet, just tell people the truth. Listen, I'm a parasite marketer. I feed off people like single-cell amoebas. I just want your money. I don't give a rat's ass about you. I don't care who you are what you're all about, but I just want you to take a position, all right? 
because it's going to make me money and I'm going to lie to you later down the road. That's, that's the best way to do it. You know, it, it's funny, and, and you're absolutely right, because there are a lot of those guys. It's, it's the same thing with the people, and I mentioned this before, is, you know, uh, come on and join. There's no sponsoring required. You know what? You'll get all kinds of spillover and everything. You know, all you have to do is just give your link to people and just tell right. them just to do the same thing. Just just come in. Give your, you don't have to sponsor anybody. Just give your link. Just give your link to everybody you know. Have them register here, and you'll never have to worry. You know, I mean, that's the most deceptive marketing there is. You know, you're telling them they don't have to sponsor, but yet you're telling them to hand out your link. Well, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> right? What the hell are you doing? Oh, you know, and, this is, and, I, and I get people doing all the time. They come to me. Hey, you don't have to sponsor. Just join here. Well, why should I have to do that? Why are you Why are you sponsoring? You said you did, you're telling me I don't have to, and you're doing it. Why are you doing it? Because I was told to have my link out to people. <laughs> That's what's given network marketing a bad name, and that's what we have to shove out of the way to make room for people who really are wanting to do it the right way and wanting to reach out and build organizations and help others to do the same. And it's it's going to take a, it's going to take time and it's going to take effort to get rid of that mentality that so many people have about network marketing and it's really sad because it is an industry that can be very very viable can help a lot of people get out of the financial crunches they're in if it's done properly if people are not taking advantage of and that's what we really have to promote in total takeover and that's what the word free promotes on ethics you know or yeah unethical environment that's what it is it's an unethical environment as long as people are manipulated with the word free <clears throat> that's not a business that is not a business uh, you know no. it's it's not business but anyhow you know what was funny I, I had a conversation with a guy last night he's a doctor okay this is a guy is a doctor and he goes I would never ever join your company and I go why would you never join our company he says the MLM industry is so unaccountable. Nobody takes accountability in anything. Like doctors, we have to be accountable for everything that we do. But in network marketing, nobody is accountable. And then he tells me, this is the funny part. Then he says, I'm gonna I, I, I want you to look at this business right here because you can go in and do nothing and make money. And I'm thinking where the hell did your accountability just go? You just went from right here into the sewer telling me to do that. And you're telling me that I don't have accountability and you just told me to do that? Where the hell was your accountability? Right? So and this is what I mean. Come in here and do nothing. You don't have to sponsor anybody. They'll give you all kinds of leads. Oh, my God. I just want to shoot myself in the head when I hear that kind of stuff. Yeah, I really hope I really hope we can be the probiotic for this industry and help eliminate, you know, the bad stuff. You know, you've got the good stuff and you've got the bad stuff in your intestinal tract and hopefully we can um eliminate the bad stuff. Well, you know what? I think with this company here, I mean, ever since I've been with Total Takeover, I've I've seen a different side of of marketers. I mean, you know, from you Val and and the ownership and everything and, and all of the panelists and everybody that I'm hanging out with, I'm seeing a different, a different focus. I mean, like you say, we're trying to, we're sick of the industry and we're trying to get it back on track. And I think that's what we're doing here. You know, I mean, we're coming out and we're spilling our guts and we're everything that we have on these hangouts here, which I think, like I've I've said to you and everybody else on here, the value that we provide here on here, this is a valuable commodity. This is this is a product. This is something that shouldn't be free to anybody, in my opinion. Okay, and and quite frankly, um, I I'm all for making these things um, a product of this of this business, one way, shape, or form, because I believe that you know what we can give it to them for free for the first hour and a half, and then once it's shut down, they want to see a replay. You know what? Go to Netflix. We'll charge you six bucks for the replay, right? Something like that. You know what I'm saying? It's just it it just doesn't seem right that 
the, the information that we do provide here, and we provide very, very valuable information. I don't care what anybody says. You know, the stuff that you get here is way better than I've seen in any kind of back office. And, and it's not just the product. I think it's the, the respectability of the people that we have in this business. And, and that, that says volumes for everything. Yeah, Again, which you know, comes at a price. We're not parasites. You know, I mean, you can tell that by the way that we... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, we're the, we're the good ones. You know, we're the good ones. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Your intestinal tract, you have good ones and you have bad ones. And the bad ones we need antioxidants for. It's like the industry, you know. We, we don't even know what we are, right? You know, we're, we're, we're human beings and we have an agenda and we... You know, we're living and breathing organisms, I guess, or an or or organism or whatever. But anyhow, sorry, Carl, I just get carried away with the esoteric stuff. No, you're right, though. I mean, like, you know, we're, we're, telling, we're telling the truth on everything here. You know, we're, we're very transparent, okay, on, on these Hangouts. Whenever we're, we're, we're transparent with people, we, we don't have to hide anything. We've got nothing to hide. We don't have to be deviant about anything. You know, we know what we have of value. We know that we provide value. You know, it's just a matter of, of somebody else just realizing and allowing themselves to accept that. And, and I guess that's where I'm at with everything here. I'm done. White noise is finished. I think we're all finished. I think we're good. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's close it down. We, I mean, we could probably go for hours on all kinds of topics, but... Um, Val, thanks for coming in. I know you came in late, but thanks for popping in. Same thing with you, Tracy, and the rest of the panelists and those that were here that left. Uh, had a great hangout once again today. And um, again, we're going to be back here tomorrow with White Noise. Carl and maybe Carl again. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> so have a great day, and we'll see you all tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.